All right, I have a Osterflom pellet stove here. And this particular stove um, was manufactured October of 92. Dad, we got the power brick. Out of the way. And I'm being summoned. My kids are playing games. Wait. Um, my control board here, this red light started doing a fast blink on here and it quit working but as you can see it's that red lights not working and I have a flame it's my glass is a little dirty but um, so like five years ago I became concerned about the possibility of the control board in here and uh, the electronics on it dying so I went and purchased some stuff to build a box that would allow me to operate my pellet stove without the control board so um, it's been running off of this box for almost a week. I was able to order parts for it, but I thought I'd show everybody what I got set up here. So to start here, this is my low temp bypass. Um, so I have my safeties are hooked up. I have both a, the low temp, so if the fire dies and it's not uh, going to have a fire in the fire pot, it won't just sit in the auger pellets and fill everything up in here and you also have a high temp that way if the fire is too big um, it'll shut the auger motor off so both of those are hooked in in line with the auger motor and they both have to be um, in a running position a low temp actually has to be up to temp before it will work so you have to have a bypass timer to get it up um, to temperature so you can just dial this over here like the um, 10 15 minute range um, depending on where your timer is and give yourself enough time to get the to stove up to temperature oh, um, so the do. convection fan is for my um, the convection air which is your hot air that comes out and this wasn't the greatest idea it doesn't work at all on lower medium high and max and high barely runs it in max blows quite a bit it, it actually turns it on on um, I would go with the dial style um, like a dimmer switch for a light that's what I got here um, this was for a ceiling fan so have your fan speeds and then your light and I was like well maybe this would work good two of those would have been better um, so if you had uh, the room set them side by side and do them on separate switches so this one is my exhaust um, air which sucks the amount of air through your fire pot and out the chimney and I have settings here for a low and a medium um, and then I have corresponding times for my yeah. auger stuff so the rest of this here this is my power switch for my auger timer I needed a um, 12 volt source to power this particular switch that I had found that I can't find anymore um, and I found some 110 volt versions uh, with digital displays that I think I might go with I really like that analog you just turn the dial and it's set I don't have to get into anything but at any rate this one is on or off for six seconds on each side and it's just turn the dial and adjust it. So there's three seconds off. There's four seconds off. Um, so you can just spin it around anywhere you want. So the higher that I set it, um, mine, if I run it on, on a low setting, it's only on the auger motors driving for a half a second or thereabouts. And then it's off for four seconds. And with my combustion fan set to the low setting that's about the flame that I get
which I think is pretty good for a low setting. And then if I turn my combustion fan up here to medium, I'll adjust this up to a second and that down to three seconds. That gives me my medium setting. And in a few minutes, um, it'll show you the flame that I got. So all this is put together. Um, while I'm waiting on that, I'll show you this. It's If you don't understand electricity, um, don't attempt this. But it's not that complex. Um, so I have my AC power coming in over here. And it splits. Power goes into switches on one side. And I have a 7-prong RV plug set up for my my cord coming out here and it's run around the back. My original design was on the back of the stove here. Um, there's a cover here and I was going to put a RV plug, this, and actually permanent mount it in the stove. And then all I had to do was plug the plug into it and everything is wired. So. I did not do that. There we go. There's a little bit more of my medium fire setting, so it's definitely doing more than it was. You can see the the flame flicker is pretty good. So, at any rate, um, the changes that I would make on my setup. I said have two um, just dimmer switch jobs not do this one for the convection fan um, I like the idea of the 110 operated switch so you don't have to have the 12 volt source on here and then in addition to this low temp timer I thought about a shutdown timer um, so when I flick my switch on my stove off it automatically quits feeding pellets and then keeps everything else on till it's down to um, cool enough temps if it shuts everything off. I don't have anything to do that. I can just turn it off with a fire in there. Or I gotta sit here and babysit it so I can shut my pellets off right here and then my fans stay running. And if um, I'm going to be gone for a couple hours or whatever before I get back to relight the stove then I'm blowing cold air everywhere in the house and okay, um, Come with me. sucking combustion okay. air um, off of my inlet back hey, here coming. on this stove hey, is right here Woo and it's it's not hooked to anything I can draft from outside but it's not hooked up so it just sucks air from the in, inside the house and would constantly dump it out so my thought was was to hook up a another bypass timer um, and when I flick my power off it would keep my fans on um, through that bypass timer for a set time frame and then shut the power off to those two so I will try and draw a uh, schematic about how to do it um, and like I said this piece I was unable to locate anymore um, I bought it off of Amazon and it tells me currently unavailable but there are the 110 units that I have seen so I will put a photo up here in a second and then a um, link to the digital timer in the description so this is the list of stuff that's on Amazon the RV plug the top two and the project box a five gang wide box to mount my uh, dial switches and a the timers and stuff like that. The five gang plate. So there are two 30 minute wall timers. One will be for the low temp bypass and one is for our shutdown timer. The two um, dial switches one is for the combustion fan and one is for the convection fan. A double rocker switch 
Um, this will be used as a power switch, um, a main power switch, that when we're shutting the stove down, one of the switches will shut um, power off to the combustion and convection fan, and the other one will shut the power off to the auger. Um, and that will be need to be separated because we have that uh, timer on the combustion and convection fan, and if I turn this timer on the way I have it wired, it would back feed and run the auger without a secondary switch on it. So we need that double throw switch. And then the um, timer for the actual auger cycle time, this one plugs into 110 as opposed to what I have. So um, I will snap a photo of my schematic and we'll try and explain this. Okay, so here's my nifty schematic. Um, so we'll start here with our power coming in. Got ground on one side, neutral on the other, and your hot leg down here. Um, so bear with my drawing, I'm not an artist. <laughs> Um, this is, uh, one of the timers for my low temp bypass, and then my, um, combustion fan, convection, the auger timer, and the other switch for temperature bypass, I'm sitting on the floor and I got a leg cramp, so, um, this big giant conundrum here is my 7 pin RV plug, so, yeah. You're just going to have to suffer. So at any rate, the main power runs in, and then I have that double throw switch. One leg of it will hook up here and shut power off to the bank down here. Prior to that, it comes out, and it'll come down over here to my, my shutdown timer. And then that will come back and feed the combustion fan and the convection fan. They will also back feed up into this so without that secondary switch it would come back into the auger timer and feed the auger timer so when you're shutting it down both of those switches would go together when you're turning it on both of those switches would go together when you're turning it on you won't need to worry about this one you'll have to use this one so um, yeah let's see so the combustion fan it pulls power from the hot leg down into here and um, all of this is connected the hot leg here and then over to our low temp like I just said so you're getting hot off of this and then it comes up and out jump jump under up over jump and to one leg on your combustion fan the other side of it will come back and go to your neutral. Same with your convection fan. One leg of it is hot, and if you follow that back down through all of my jumps and everything, it'll go to convection on the other side. So you got the hot coming down into the, that switch, and then the other side of it will go feed um, through your RV plug, figure out where you want to wire it. No big deal on any any of the pins on there, just stick it somewhere, make sure your wires are completely um, inside the plug, there's nothing exposed, this is 110 volt, not 12 volt, so make sure it's, um, nothing's going to touch. You can start a fire, you can um, electrocute yourself, you can do all sorts of bad thing so if this intimidates you you don't know what you're doing don't do it but so that those two switches will give me combustion fan convection fan then my auger timer takes four i need um power wire run down that's this big jump here and then where it goes into the plug and then the same with my little ones that does all this jump up to neutral that turns this power to the switch on so then I have have the uh, other side of that double throw switch 
like I said, so I've got power on here and everything's got power. The switch itself is on, but it doesn't have any power going to the auger motor until that lower switch is turned on. So turn that lower switch on and power will come in, out, up. Um, what did I do here? Let me see. I drew that wrong. No, I didn't. I'm following the wrong one. That one is the power one. See, even me, I get confused on this stuff. So the two that run into the switch are to turn the power to the switch on. So that's, that's why it's going up to neutral. So I have to have neutral and I have to have hot to turn the switch on. This hot coming down to the outside of the switch is the one that's coming through and going with this hot, which comes down over here, goes to my high temp safety, out to my low temp safety, out and to my auger motor. So as long as both of those are um, in operational state, then it will feed power to my auger motor and keep it spinning. However, the low temp will be in a state of disconnect when the stove is just first starting. So that's where the other two wires coming out, coming across over here and go into the low temp bypass. So when you turn the dial on, it will make contact um, connecting them together and it will allow the power to pass from the high temp up through here, around and back through here and just completely bypass that. So your auger motor will work as long as that's on until the temperature is up high enough that this picks up and goes. So that is both your safeties on there and then you have everything else on your stove working. So it takes a little bit more than some of them that I've seen. Um, you can unhook this. The only concern um, is the possibility right now of you back feeding into the computer on your stove. So depending on what is wrong, if your control board went out, you shouldn't have any problems. But if you can unplug stuff and just take the wires and plug into um, just to eliminate the possibility of back feeding and something else going wrong, this will run your pellet stove. Now the current price tag was $187.78 for, um, I didn't get any wire, like uh, 16 gauge, 14 gauge wire to hook anything up. This is the project box, um, the RV plugs. Um, I didn't even get the bus bars. Uh, the power, sw or the switches, the dials, the auger timer, all of that stuff that you saw on that list a little bit ago. 187.78. So it's not terribly cheap doing it this way, but I have all the safeties hooked up. I have um, the ability to start it up and shut it down somewhat like it should be, and the finesse control that um, I think the pellet stoves need. So, and then going through on your um, seven prong plug. Um, one, my ground wire here runs out, so that's ground. I have the neutral leg um, coming back. My flash just turned off and it is goofing with me. So neutral coming back, um, the hot wire to my combustion fan, the hot wire to my convection fan, the uh, hot wire to my auger, which goes through my temp sensors and then my two bypasses for my temps low temp. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wires. So hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, if it does not, then maybe you should just buy a new control board or a new stove or get somebody out that knows what they're doing.